He <laughs> recently retired that, from boxing with a record of 25 fights. Oh. 18 wins, 15 by oh. knockout, five defeats and two draws. To many, he is the white rhino, but he prefers another name. It is the Doncaster De La Hoya, David Allen. Yeah. I've got to say, before Smithy, I'm so sorry. I've just got to get on his get up first. Talk to me. <laughs> really? he's, gone, he's gone smart up atop, sport shorts with a pair of <laughs> plimp soles on, <laughs> for the Astro out the back. I love it. Talk smart to me about this. Smart casual. He said smart casual, so I put the shirt on. Smart casual, yeah. Put the shorts on, and uh, you know, I was hoping to score a few goals outside. I love I, it. Really? I scored goals and I hit crossbars, you know, I just want everyone to know that I'm a, I'm a goal scorer. <laughs> David, for what it's worth, I love your outfit. Settle in and let's have a look at you in action, mate. Yeah! <laughs> You big disgrace, kicking your can all over the place, singing We will, we will rock you We will, we will rock you Five fights and only 28 years of age. Last week you announced your retirement. I think some people were a bit surprised at that. So just give us the reasons behind that decision. Um, well, I've been boxing for 12 years now, professional for eight, uh, but I wasn't the most professional man in the world, you know, and uh, it's, it's kind of caught up with me a little bit, you know. I've took probably too many knocks, more knocks than a 28-year-old normally would. Mm. So uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to get out of boxing. I... I, I um, I did well out of boxing and I wanted yeah. to retire from boxing. I didn't want boxing to eventually retire me, so I just thought I'd call it a day, get out there a little bit early probably, but uh, I'm safe, I'm healthy and I'm happy. And fair play to you. And you said that you wasn't as professional as you thought you should be. Go on, yeah. explain to me that. What, is your well, what did your days consist of then? Well, we discussed these things earlier and uh, not, nothing, nothing great, nothing I can mention right now either. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, um, I was a nuisance all my life, you know. I started boxing at 16 and... Uh, I wouldn't diet, I wouldn't yeah. train, and they're the two things you need to be a, a good professional. I was going to say, they're quite important, aren't they? Yeah, yeah so uh, I, I li I've lived the normal life of a normal bloke in his, in his late teens and 20s, yeah. and uh, I was very fortunate I still, I still did well somehow. I'm not really sure how either. Wow. <laughs> so talking about, you said you did well, highlight, if you had to pick a, a standout moment from your boxing career, what would it be? Uh, for me, you know, I, I, won some, I won some big fights, had some big nights at the O2 Arena, which was great, but... Uh, you know, the, the last quarter of my career, whatever arena I went to, they would sing there's only one David Allen, you know, on the way to the ring, after the fights, and uh, I wasn't the best fighter in the world, but uh, I always said the people made me what, what, what I am now, and um, when they used to sing my name and stuff, I couldn't believe it. I only got into boxing because I wanted my old man to like me, you know, I just wanted him That's to like me. That's the reason, yeah. yeah He's yeah, a big so boxing fan, right? He was a professional he boxer as well, yeah, yeah. so I want my dad to like me. And I thought a few people might, people might like me. Eventually, the whole the whole country ends up liking me, and my old yeah. man probably still don't, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't know what right. a buzz that was though for you, eh? Right? To, oh. to go out to like crowd singing your name. You know? I used to like you'd prepare to go to the ring, and as soon as the fans had like started to see me walk to the ring, they'd start singing the only one David Allen, and I'd just be a bit emotional. <laughs> like yeah. I said, I only got into boxing really because a I didn't really want to do nine to five, and b I wanted my old man, I just wanted people to like me, really. That was yeah. it. And, of course, you became a bit of a cult here, and not just what you did in the ring, but for what you did outside the ring. You, you've spoken very honestly. I've seen some interviews with you where you speak so in honestly and openly about your struggles, your mental health struggles, yeah. uh, your, your gambling addictions. If you don't want me asking, I know it's a very a, a, a deep and, and honest yep. conversation we're having, but how bad did things get, and how did you turn that around for people that might be suffering from something similar? Well, as a, as a young man, I think people would have called me uh, eccentric. I'm very eccentric, right. you know, I'm a little bit different. I like to do different things. Uh, but uh, as I got older, um, I started to... I, started, I was a terrible gambler, to be honest. I was horrific with it. I saw Mike Catamore earlier on the Sky Sports Race. Yeah. I was starstruck. He's only a commentator, but I was starstruck with him. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, loved, I loved the horses, so... Um, yeah. I was, I, I was, I've been gambling since I was eight years old. You know, my mum and dad had taken me a bet, like, and it was just, it was just one of them things. I loved the horse racing. I'd write my little bets out on my thing, and, and as I got older, I got a bit more money. I'd bet more, and eventually I bet everything that I had. The day I bought Dillian White, I knew a certain, but the certain amount of money I would come out of the fight with 
I gamble that whole purse on the day. So when I'm walking, they're in the whole and white. I know I'm doing it for free, effectively. Wow. wow. And uh, I ended up boxing number one heavyweight in the world, Luis Ortiz, who was ranked number one with the, with a few governing bodies. And I boxed him for peanuts because I needed the money from the from the gambling, you know. Mm. Yeah. And at one point, I, I did try to take my own life at one point, 2015, and. Um, wow. It, it was that bad, you know, and I, the gambling what wasn't was a major part of it. But I'm very fortunate. Um, my, my sister should be watching Danielle. Hello. Yeah. Hi, uh, Danielle. How are Danielle? you, lads? <laughs> Hello to my other sister as well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and she had to take she takes all of my money. Still, looks after me now. You know, that's part of the reason I'm dressed like this. She won't let me spend any money. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see you back. Nice see, and great healthy. to see him looking well, and well done for speaking honestly about it. So, I've got a question here for you. Alongside your fighting, you've also sparred with some of the best. Yep. Klitschko, Joshua, oh. uh, Fury, Usyk. What happened with... Tell me the um, story about Klitschko. Well, when they rung up, they rung my manager and said, uh, can David come spar Klitschko? He's, he's fighting... Uh, Klitschko's fighting Kubrat Pulev. So they're looking... Kubrat Pulev, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, big fella, stand-up style. And my manager went, they want you, but you're not big enough. And I went, I am big enough. And they went, you're 6'2", 6'3". You six, six, I went, yeah. I'm 6'5", if they ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I said, I said tell them I'm 6'5". Yeah. Anyway, the week after I'm on the plane, I turned up, they went, you, you're not what we expected. I went, yeah, well, you know. And <laughs> I'm here now, yeah. So, <laughs> did you just get in with him? So I, I did, I sparred with him. I, st I think I stayed for five days. And I went, and uh, I was two or three seven overweight, so I turned up and, uh, well, just train in, in, between, in between the spars, train yeah. and get yourself a bit sharp, trying to get a bit of weight off. The food was incredible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I must have put on half a stone in four or five days. <laughs> so every, every time his, his coach and stuff going past, I'm eating. And I'm like, what are you doing? I said, don't worry about it. So I sparred, sparred well, but the yeah. Kubrat Pulev, he's got a style like this. Mm -hmm. I just ran around the ring, I ran away from him. I thought, <laughs> he's, he's, there's no way he's just me. I'm on, I'm on holiday in Austria eating. Oh, it was unbelievable. So, yeah. I thought, no way. Way Klitschko was ruining my holiday, hitting me. So I ran and eventually went, David. Klitschko came up to me, stroked my head and went, you know what, son? You, you, well, he didn't say, you know what, son, because he's, he's not English, is he? And he went, <laughs> <laughs> what did he say, then? <laughs> what did he say? He went, David. And I went, yeah. And he went, you've had a great time, but we're, we're going to send you home because you're not really what we expected. And I went, you know what, it don't even matter. So I went home, never had a mark on me, great food, paid me the lot. Oh, so, I love that. I've got to say, Jim, <laughs> what's the story that is? <laughs> Uh, and I'm sure, I, I think I'll speak for everyone in here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love I'm it. sure it is. Whatever you do next, boy. you will absolutely smash it. Everyone is uh, the right rhino. David Allen. David Allen. <laughs>